All right, guys, I want to take a minute and talk to you about planer boards, floats, planer floats, all kinds of different ways to get our baits far away from the boat, ways to present bait in the most natural fashion with little to no weight at all, allowing the bait to swim throughout the water column. And, uh, you know, just to give it the biggest bang for the buck, cover the most amount of water in the least amount of time. This is typically how we catch our bigger fish. Okay, usually in the water gets cooler, fall, winter, early spring, we use this a lot, but I've used it pretty much somewhere another 365 days a year. It's just an extremely, extremely effective method. You don't need a lot of experience. You uh, just need a little bit of current, either current you're generating with your trolling motor, your gasoline engine, or just the wind that you have, or if you're anchored up, just the current of a river flowing or a tide coming in and out. So that's what makes it a cool method you know uh, pretty much all you need to do is get around some kind of moving water or any movement at all and you can use this method one way or the other I'm gonna start by showing you exactly what I use and what I carry on my boat okay I usually have at least eight planer boards these are inline planer boards I'm not really you know held up on one brand or another I've used a lot of different brands I do like an aluminum board they're a lot lighter these boards here, these are Zach Royce signature boards. I like that they have a lobe cut out here in the front. For years and years, I used one that was square on both ends, and uh, I was resistant to this, but I tried it, and what I like about it is it jumps over pine needles and leaves. Any stuff that might be floating on the water tends to build up on the front of these boards, and with this lobe here, they kind of just go right under. So I've actually grown to like these a lot. This is the release that I prefer. You'll typically see two different styles when you buy boards of different brands. These are the old offshore releases. I don't like these. They have a little orange rubber pad. I don't know if you can see that, but the orange pad always comes off. The glue you know, dries up and then the pad sticks to one side. Can you see that sticking to one side? But I stay away from these. They work well when they work, but when that glue dries out, nah, no good. So these are the Scotty brand. I like these. They have a little uh, adjustment here. You can set it on high tension or low tension by moving this back and forth. I always leave it on high tension. And the rubber surrounds the entire mouth of the clip. So I like these. As long as you get an aluminum board, try to stay with the Scotty Clips if you can. Great board. Light. It's a mid-sized board. Some are really big. You can get some real heavy ones. I've seen some that are enormous for pulling giant baits and stuff like that. I pulled plenty of big baits with this. I mean, I've pulled trout that are this big, and yeah, they'll pull on the board once in a while, but I'd rather have a board that I can handle, you know, with a fish on and not, you know, dragging a big street sign down the road, you know. So it's, it's light enough where it's kind of a, does it all for me, you know. This has a little pigtail release on it, and what it is is you would clip your board, and I'll show you how to attach your board. But this has a little pigtail on it. The pigtails are cool, especially if you have big sausage fingers like my buddy Tommy. But a lot of them just have a uh, typical snap swivel, which is fine too. I, I don't mind either way. But that little snap swivel can be tough if you have thick fingers, you know, especially when it's cold. Okay, those are the kind of boards that I like. I used the offshore boards years and years ago when I was a kid because they were the only ones that were out. But that big, heavy keel weight and the big plastic, it's a very heavy, cumbersome board, and I've just gotten away from them. They pull fine, but. If you slow down with an offshore board, the board will lay on its side. No good. These will always stay upright. The floats I like are just ready rig floats, just a ready rig release. The clip slides on here. Okay, you detach that to your line, and then this is your release right here. Okay. And I always push it down even though it has a spring in it, but that's your release. That's a typical ready rig float right there, release float. The typical ready rig release float. Now, you know, they've had all different sizes and, and everything over the years. I don't need anything big. I just, I really don't need, need to keep a very good eye on the float as long as it's out there. Like, you're not watching the float all day like a largemouth bass fishing with a wild chiner, you know. You're basically watching your rod tips most of the time anyway. It's nice to see your, your, your float out there so you can manage your lines, but you don't need something like this to keep an eye on all day. Now, over the years, I've kind of tweaked some floats, and what I did was I added this fin years ago. And it's just to a ready rig float 
and uh, it does a great job. They're designed to work in pairs. These are called TOS planar floats. They put the TOS in there as a little homage to Team Old School, of course. I don't make a penny selling these. I just wanted these to be out there at the best price so you guys can get them. I just get free floats, that's it. I don't get a dime from Ready Rig. But I wanted you guys to be able to get these, so I told them just put the TOS in there. That's good enough for me. So you clip this on, I'll show you here in a minute, and this angled piece of metal in here when you put your lines out the back instead of just having two floats out the back like say your boat is eight foot wide and you have a rod in each corner now your floats are only eight foot apart from each other with these here as you let line out they plane away from each other so they're not going to get way out to the side of the boat like a planer board would but they work great in pairs and they stay away from each other so instead of eight feet away you can get them 18 80 foot whatever as much line as you put out you can get these further and further away from each other and what it does is it gives you a hassle-free day you can let out a bunch of line you know that even though if you make a lot of zigzags and hard turns these will stay away from each other and if you want to get you know brave you can go ahead and put a third one right out the middle because now you have the room so basically i keep a bunch of regular ready rig floats for straight and i keep a bunch of these TOS planer floor floats here for the corners and I keep a bunch of just regular inline planers for the sides of the boat that's all I really carry on the boat for most most applications I will use my trolling motor most of the time to ease us along but I have anchored in current and just let the boards out and the current just takes and puts my full spread out if you want I've anchored up plenty of times and done that I know guys who fish from the bank put a board in the water and just let the current take the board out I've drifted with boards before so one of the best times I've ever had on the water my trolling motor was dead and I just set out two planer boards on each side and I used my trolling motor I mean I used my my gas engine I just sat there at the wheel and I just steered with the wind without the motor running just enough wind blowing you know the boat is sitting up out of the out of the water and then just enough wind pushing us and these sit down in the water so you're pulling against the water and they go out they're, they're not very high in the water they don't catch the wind the same way the boat does so the boat always goes a little faster so you really don't need a trolling motor to do it. I know guys that trip off the side of the boat and don't steer at all. Just go with, with the wind and set a few off either side and they just pull out nice. So there's a lot of different ways you can use these. Now let me show you how I attach them. All right, let's start with our rig. Here our main line is 30 pound test, 30 pound mono. I like to use glass beads. I like glass beads because they make a lot of noise. Okay, they, they wrap against each other pretty nice. If you use plastic, they really don't make any noise at all. And I like to use at least three so there's one surrounded, you know, making that nice noise. You can add more if you want. They do add a little bit extra weight too. So if you want your bait to get down a little more, you could add more. I used to add these when I was a largemouth bass fisherman. I used to put these against my hook for a Texas rig and rattle them really nice, you know, for like a crayfish or something like that. But, you know, in salt water, these fish are eating lots and lots of crabs. They're eating lobster, any crustaceans on the bottoms, clams. I mean, anything that could be rattling around on the bottom. So that extra noise really adds a lot of nice attractant to it. It's more of a natural sound. And, uh, you know, when you have eels, eels pull straight down. If they're very lively eels, they'll, pull, they'll always try to get to the bottom. And the rocking of the boat and the eel pulling down adds a nice, nice rattle to it. I use them with shad, too, and I use them with herring and everything else. But uh, with the eels really nice combination there okay then I just have a small barrel swivel there then we use fluorocarbon usually this is 25 pound fluorocarbon it's 30 pound main line with a 25 pound fluorocarbon this can go anywhere from 10 pounds of fluorocarbon up to 60 depending on when and where we're fishing all right this is a circle hook I almost always use a circle hook I use an inline circle hook with my planer boards check that I use an offset offset circle hook don't use an inline with your planer boards sorry about that I use an offset hook with planer boards you can see it's slightly offset okay it's owner mutu owner mutu anywhere from a four aught to a six aught you know for eels and another good reason for the beads is to keep your float or board from sliding all the way down to your hook so let me show you how we attach. We'll go ahead and attach a planer float first. All you do is clip it on above your beads right here. And when you're fighting your fish, that's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna slide down to your beads. You won't lose your float and the float won't go all the way down to the hook. It'll stop there at your beads. So let's say I have an eel on. I'm using eels today, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and hook an eel. I'm gonna put that in the water and I'm gonna hold my float just like this. And I'll put my reel in free spool. I'm going to go ahead and let out as much line as I want for my depth. Okay. 
So how do, deep do I want my bait? Well, I want my bait 10 feet. So I want my eel to swim at 10 feet deep. So I have my float here. My leader is four foot, so I'm gonna let another four foot out of this. I'll pull four feet out. So now I have eight foot total from my float to my eel. And then I grab the line here from the rod tip side, not this side here, I grab it from my rod tip side. And one thing I do that seems no one else does for some reason is I put a twist in my line. Uh, just the one, one or two twists, you see me just spin it like that. And I push the plunger up and then I go ahead and, and attach it. Now I will push down on it just to make sure it's in there good. Put a little memory in that rubber. And when I pull, I wanna make sure that all my line is on top of the, of the blade here. I don't want the line to go underneath like that. I want it on top like this. And that's it, as it pulls, that little blade will pull out to the side of the boat. And you'll see how nice the twist comes out. When the fish tightens down and pulls that hook and sets the hook, it'll just pull the twist out and it all floats, slides right down. So if it's a planer, if it's a float, whatever, it's gonna slide right down and stop right here. Now, another reason I do that little twist is to keep the float from getting hung up. Now, the old method was just to go ahead and clip it into the line, and most people do that. They'll clip it in, and that is usually fine. You usually have enough to pull, and that will come out. But if you're on a slow day and that float's been sitting out there or the board's been sitting out there for a while, this line will create a challenge, a channel in there. This line is hard. It will leave a channel in that soft rubber over time. And when you open it up, you can see two little grooves, one on the top, one on the bottom, where it, it left a channel. And if it's sitting out there and you're trying to trigger it or a fish is pulling, it'll just slide down that channel. And it'll just slide. The, I've seen guys yanking and yanking and just will not trip because it's just sliding down that channel. So, you know, most of the times it will pop out, but you saw it actually slid about two inches before it came out right there. So if it sat there for a long time, it may have slid a long ways before popping out. With the twist, this way, as soon as the twist comes out, it's released. It's gone. It's right down. So I love that little twist trick. All right, let's pull our float off and let's try a planer board. Okay, let's attach a board. Now, if, it's, if your board has a snap swivel on the end, you attach it the same way. These have the little pigtails. When the line is tight, like this, I just put the pigtail above it and spin it. I don't have a tight line to show you right now, it's loose, so. A lot of people attach it this way on a loose line anyway. They just make a little loop right there. And on your pigtail, you see the pigtail kind of comes to an end. Right there, that little end piece. And you take your loop, let me see how I can show you this. You take your loop and you go over the little end of the pigtail, like that. And then you just spin it. So you see me holding it, I'm just gonna spin it like that. That's it, and it's up and on. So I just fill a little loop and I just spun it on. When a line is tight, let me see if I can get a little tight line here and I can show you the other way. I don't know if I have enough here. Okay. And to take it off, you just will slide it up and just spin the pigtail. And it comes right off. Let me show you again with one hand. This time with it tight, I'll just put it on like this and you just spin it. Me spinning it and it's on. To take it off, just spin it. Guys love this if they're using gloves or if they have, you know, thick sausage fingers like my buddy Tommy. These are a great way to attach it or snap swivel. These last forever, there's no really moving parts, so these do last a lot longer. Okay, when to use boards and floats. Well, the original reason or the need was to get your baits extremely shallow. When these fish are moving up to spawn or they're chasing spawning bait in one, two, three feet of water, you need to get your bait up into that area, into that shallow water. So in, sh in uh, fresh water, say we're fishing creeks, uh, the shad are starting to spawn or the bass are themselves are starting to spawn, they're moving up into the rivers and they'll feed up on those shallow banks. What we do is we want to put our baits way up on the bank. So the board that's going to go furthest from the boat up onto the bank, I may only put two feet of line behind it. The bait may be just, just a liter's length, you know, just right behind it. And that board will go all the way up on the bank and it'll just pull that bait through that shallow water. 
If you let out too much line, he's going to get snagged. Typically, I have no weight at all. I want that bait to swim naturally. And we'll grab the rod and we'll pull and jiggle the board and make noise sometimes and all that. Sometimes you want it stealthy, sometimes you want it to make noise. But the whole idea is to get the bait up in that two feet of water. Then we'll have another board out next to it. Maybe that one's riding in three or four feet of water. Then the next one's closest to the boat. Maybe that's 10, 12 feet of water. Then at the boat, we'll have our floats, maybe a couple split shot lines or free lines. And on the other side of the boat, those baits were going to go out into the channel. So we'll have three boards on that side as well, going all the way out to the channel, anywhere from 20 to 30, 40 foot deep in the channel. So if you're cruising your boat between the channel, the creek channel and the creek bank, you have baits on two feet of water and you have baits all the way out in the creek channel and 40 feet of water and everything in between. So, you know, you can see how it's so effective. You're covering the entire water column all the way through. Over the course of the day, this fish may move. Early in the day, you may catch them on the bank side. And, you know, as the sun comes up, you may start catching them near the boat or on the, on the uh, channel side. And as the sun goes down, it may reverse. So in fresh water, you have to be able to do this in cooler water. These are where your biggest fish come. This is when uh, your crazy, awesome hunter fish days come on stuff like this. And your, you know, you, typically your epic days come. Is the reason I love doing this stuff is because the best days come this way in our biggest fish, especially in salt water. So we took this method and brought it to the Chesapeake and just put our eels out. Now we're not fishing banks and creeks out there. We're fishing usually ridge lines, drop offs, usually a depth line or a temperature line. So, you know, you're fishing right where the temperature changes and there might be bait everywhere and there's no bait at a few degrees cooler or a few degrees, you know, uh, warmer. So you're fishing that depth ridge or, you know, say, say you have a big flat area in 20 feet and it drops off to the channel. We'll fish right between the channel and that big flat area. And we'll put a full spread out going with the current. If your tide's going out at, you know, half a mile an hour, one mile an hour, we'll go 1.5 with the current. Put a nice big spread out and the idea there is to cover a lot of water not necessarily different water depths but just a giant open area when these migratory striped bass are coming into an area we want to be there to intercept them we want a lot of baits out there sometimes no weight sometimes a split shot but i will rarely go more than a half an ounce on any planer board or float very rarely almost no weight at all and that's it it's a great way to spread and cover your you know water look for those big wide open areas where those bigger fish come in, those big rogue striped bass come in. I get I have friends using this for catfish. Zach Royce fished with me striper fishing many years ago and he said, Mike, do you think this will work for catfish? And I said, I I know it will work for catfish. I've caught everything and anything there is on these. And sure as heck he went and made a whole entire system based around planer boards for catfish. I know guys are using it as well, but he really has mastered it. And he's catching state records on these things, fish over 100 pounds. So it's a great way for any method, any style of fish, any species, with a trolling motor, without a trolling motor. All you need is a little movement or a little bit of current. I will put links to all these in the uh, description there. I don't make a dime on any of these planer boards or floats. Like I said, I did design this one with a ready rig or four ready rig and it's called the TOS planer float. I do get free floats, but I don't make any money off them. If you just want to click on there in the link and, and find them for yourself, it'll be down in that description. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't, it really helps me out. Shoot me a thumbs up if you like the video. You can do one of these if you don't like it. If you have ideas for videos, please give them in the comments there. That stuff really helps me out and gives me some good ideas. And stay safe on the water, leave a few for me. I love you guys, mean it. Let's <laughs> go.